In African countries, including Nigeria, albinos are classified amongst the vulnerable groups of society, which includes people living with various kinds of physical disabilities. Being an albino, it's not really easy, but at times I enjoyed it because I remember back then when they would give us some work to do in school. Because of my color, they will, my father will, will be angry that they, are, they asked me to follow the other students, the other children, and do the work in the field. So most of the times I, I did not follow them and work. As I was growing up, it was not easy because at times when coming back from school, the sun will turn my color to red and I'll be like, oh God. In fact, it was not that sweet. My mommy has to carry me to school most of the times with umbrella, bring me back in the afternoon. In the morning, she would take me to school and in the, in the afternoon, she would come pick me back with umbrella. The prevalence rate of albinism in Nigeria is ranked amongst the highest in the world, with an estimated figure of over 2 million albinos living in the country. By implication, people with albinism in Nigeria represent one of the largest vulnerable groups in the country today. The UN model to disability is either social, physical, intellectual, that's the three major categories and what, what's the definition? Is is there any permanent impairment which somebody have that will not allow him or her to operate on equal basis with others? And that means if you can you can run. If I'm on a wheelchair, I cannot compete with you because of the condition. And it's now permanent. I'm permanent on a wheelchair. Of course, we have temporary disability and we have permanent disability. And According to the UN, which is an international, if the UN de redefines, then we will know. Say it's physical, it is intellectual, it can also be social. There's another one, mental, physical, mental, uh, intellectual, and social. Okay, and any physical, permanent physical, social, intellectual, or mental condition that is permanent, that will not allow anybody to operate in the society on equal basis with others. That is in terms of employment, in terms of education, in terms of healthcare, in terms of job. Okay. On albinism, our skin is susceptible to cancer far higher than yours. That is physical. If an albino is exposed to the sun over a period of 10 years, there is a 90% chance 95% chance. Of course, we are saying that there, is, there are different classification of albinism. De depending on the melanin level, melanin is what protects your skin from the sun by natural. So we have people who acquired disability, but naturally we came out into this earth. That is why we are not persons living with albinism. We are persons with albinism. So we came out to this world without enough melanin. And sometimes it can be very low. I do have, but it's very low. Depending on how white the skin, the hair, that is how you notify it. So by that condition, if I go under the sun and do marketing with you for 10 years, almost nothing will happen. You, you're, of course, you see you'll be, you'll be darker. But my own, my son, the sun will burn my skin. And it can lead me to cancer, which is extremely costly. That is on the physical. Children constitute about 40% of this population spread across all the states in Nigeria. We visit the Udo Chukus, where three of their children are albinos. What is life for them, you may wonder. When I was pregnant, I never knew I would give birth to an albino child. But when I gave birth to my first daughter, albino, I don't take it as if it is anything. I did not know they have another word, I don't know. But I know everything, the child is child. First of all, children is a gift from God. So whether I've been no, or not I've been no, children is children. And we thank God that for He God giving us 
this children and then in spite of the fact that uh, I've been urged to maintain them is very difficult based on what they use and the challenges of uh, them going to school and dealing with son. So it has not been easy. Us as a parents handling them. So the challenges we have as a parents will be we are afraid that based on rumors we are hearing of uh, people using abinos for rituals or so. So sometimes if they go to school, they are afraid whether anything will happen to them. But at the same time, we still pray that God should protect them. The other one is uh, what they use. Their cream, the soup is very, very expensive. And this time around that uh, this uh, COVID-19 has affected every sector. Like presently like me, as their, as their dad, it not affected my own job. You know, that was been easy for me to take care of them. At times I feel that it's her school. If she's going to school, if she comes back, I want to cross check her book. There are some things I don't see. Get. I'll ask her why she said she did not see those things, those spaces. She did not see what was on the board. I said, Why didn't you go close? She said, Everybody was shouting, Oh, you will go out from the road, you will go out from the road. I said, You're not sitting at the front. She said, She's still sitting at the front with your glasses. And again, you're not still, you're not still seeing. So at times, even she, when she's, she comes back, I'll see her body red. I'll go to the school and quarry. I'll rig. They say they've been trying to hold me to it that if she sees her mate playing, she's not really happy that she's alone in the class. If the teacher they remove their face and before you know, pshum, or you go inside the song. There are two types of albinism. Type 1 is oculocutaneous albinism, which is the pigment is lacking in the eyes, in the skin, and hair. This type of albinism is more prevalent. Type 2 is ocular albinism, which is much less common and involves lack of pigment only in the eyes. People who have ocular albinism have generally normal skin and hair color. Many even have normal eye appearance. Despite their stated vulnerability and strength in number, and unlike other vulnerable groups in Nigeria, albinos least enjoy the same level of special attention, security and support from governments at all levels in the country, it would seem. Statistics show that over 600,000 Nigerians with albinism suffer discrimination from their families, schoolmates and even peers. Some people start the discrimination, start being discriminated or, or discrim face discrimination right from their home. You see parents, the reports we get, I did experience that in my house and that's what helped me. I didn't experience discrimination in my house. So you see a child, when the mother is going out, lock the child in the door in the house. When they are in the church together or in the market together or in somewhere together, in an event together, they want to start going and the mother will tell the child, oh yeah, go there and wait for me. So the child already feeling not understanding the challenges she's facing, of course, no, she's facing short vision, the bone of the skin. But for the father, the mom said, What are you looking for? In the presence, I said, Go and get out of this place. It's free, it happens. You walk on the road most of the time in the night, you will not fear as I will fear. Because of that institutionalized stigma, like I've named that, our ladies, it is three times easier for a young dark skinned lady to get married than an albino lady. They will have the same qualification. Maybe even the albino lady will be more beautiful. Or maybe have more, you know, what they call all this packaging and all that. But just for the fact that she's an albino, the social orientation of that community. In 10 years, in 20 years, when we, when we are done with the social, we have used a lot of sensitization and reorientation to bring down this stigma. When we call it this is institutionalized, that means in 90% of the cases, you'll be discriminated. 
Chidema recalls her job hunting days and how she was denied an opportunity just because of the color of her skin. We were like three girls. They took that, those two and still request for extra one person. They said the kind of food we eat is different. Our cream and everything about us are very expensive that they cannot afford it. I was like, ah, ah. What kind of food again do we eat? I don't know. We eat normal food. The woman said, no, we don't have money. I beg, oh, please, oh, come and be going. I felt bad. In fact, I cried as I was going because I know I can do the job very well. However, in spite of the color of their skin, they remain comfortable in themselves while acknowledging what may appear as their peculiar challenges. I use this to see just like this, to see whether I can see what is written in the board. We and Albino have been both blessings and there have been challenges. The color is one of the unique things about us. You don't want to be related with because we are white. And you also want to be related with because we are white. So people already have this phobia for you being white. And so in some cases, it will see as a disadvantage. People don't, might not want to do businesses with you especially for the business owners but for some people who want to do business with you because they are seeing a different kind of person they've not met an albino before they've not experienced an albino before they want to see how this person thinks how this person works they want to it's a blessing it's hope it's pep's way being an albino have also helped me a lot there are several places that i've been to that i couldn't if not because i'm an albino i wouldn't have been able to get to that stage get to that place so, yeah, it's true, I'm an Abino, but I love being an Abino. I just ask God to help me with life, strength, because I know that it's, apart from the sun and the sight, there is nothing else that if I want to achieve with my life that I cannot achieve. I think the light clicked on me when I was doing marketing in a particular day. When a man told me something spectacular, I said, you are peculiar. Use your color to make money. <laughs> so before then, of course, the reality is and has been that there are so much challenges that persons with albinism face. That is stigma, pressure. At times, it even makes you to begin to doubt yourself. So when the man told me that, that look, I was, I was merchandising something, saying you are peculiar or you are spectacular. Use your color to make money. So, and that showed me that there is an angle you can begin to consider. It means that you have to work hard. It also means that there are possibilities that you can go without allowing the pressures that was there. I don't see myself different from them. It's just a difference of color. I'm blessed just as they also are blessed. Grace is a teacher. And while schools are on lockdown as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, she has her little lesson class going on. Make sure you can write what I can read. Please write very well. And make your letters bold and your numbers bold so that I can go through it. Thank you. Hurry up. And her story is not any different. Sometimes when you're walking around the street, you see little children following you about singing so many kind of funny songs about albinism. Some will call you or you go pepe, some that doesn't eat pepe, you don't take salt. Some will be singing all funny kinds of sing songs for you. But well, I don't do anything. I don't get angry. I will just walk away because I know I am unique. I am special and beautifully made. I'm just like them, but a difference of color. So. An Abino, being an Abino is a blessing to me and also to my family. She has accommodation problem, then I decided to take her in to come and live with us. So since then, she has the sunlight. I have never seen, they are saying people are bad or Abino, they do this, but on her own side, I didn't say anything like that. Every Albino will be like her. Honestly, I would like to have a Albino. 
While they lived their lives as best as they could, they also acknowledged the so many myths about them and somewhat unkind words thrown at them sometimes. I still keep hearing people say, Uwulele you. This is money on daily basis in the streets of Lagos. But it doesn't used to impact me the way it used to. You know, reason being that um, I've actually understood that. I don't think that anybody can have that power and influence uh, to harm me if I have not hurt him. When I'm walking on the road, the people, the Yorubas, they will say, Oh, worry, oh, worry, meaning this one is money, this one is money. I was like, ah, what is this? How do I become money for them? Some say, yes, if we use this one for money ritual, you make money. Well, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't discourage me. My fear for the children at times is mostly Yoruba friends. They say, ah, don't let your children to go outside because of people that are all these ritualists, they do this, they do this. I, then when I was staying at Ikotu, I didn't take it as anything because I go to Yoruba church and they, they used to tell me, so I'm always careful. But when I came here, I said, ah, this area is Igbo domain. But I still thank God. Ene Bonyani did that, which somebody caught. Moving around in the night, I personally did not like it, not because I'm an Abino but just because I don't like it. Then in some areas that I stay, I remember where I was working before, the owner of the place told me that I should not move out once it's six o'clock. I was like, ah, why? What happened? He said that they will use me for money ritual. I was scared. In fact, I was scared of the man. So I left the place because for him to just tell me that on my first day, I was so scared. Made this man not even come and use me for the money ritual. And away from all of these, I asked them about relationships as well. In the area of relationship, well, it's not been easy indeed. Well, people don't easily accept people like with abinism. Well, I happened to meet a friend. We were together, but along the line, he quit. Since I started growing up, I've been seeing different kinds of people. But there is one person that amazed me most. He said, Black. When he told me, when I met him, he told me that, ah, that he has signed that without a person living with abinism, he has nothing to do with another person. What it really, really encouraged me. It made me feel happy. I'm only in the good market now, Abby. <laughs> so I hope to uh, be in a relationship soon. But I have not considered this a problem, okay? For me, I don't believe everybody should like me. No, I'm not because I'm an Abino. Anyways, in terms of relationship, um, at times, like in the past, I have, I was dating someone that I intend to, that I thought I would end up with, but the family of the guy, because I'm an Abino, they said no. And that kind of thing has been happening several times in my life. So at a time, I have to accept it this way. In fact, I don't want it to make me feel weak. Because I know, I take it that this is what life, what my faith, what, this is how it is with me, so I have to take it. Yes, I cannot go to their mind to change their mindset or tell them how good I am. I believe if they want me, they'll be patient to know who I am instead of judging uh, with my color. I intend to get married someday, but for now, um, yeah, I'm in a relationship right now. But among these children, there is seeming no discrimination at all. <laughs> 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 
Grace tells me singing is one of her hobbies, and she sang this song with a message in it. No matter your tradition, we are one. No matter your culture, we are one. No matter your tribe, we are one. Let's come together as one. No matter your language, we are one. No matter your family, we are one. Way that reach upon, we are one. Let's come together as one.